Okay. Um, as uh, Bomani said, my name is Craig Norman, and um, I got to Ghana in 1998 with the Peace Corps. I uh, came as a Peace Corps volunteer and turned into the head of all the Peace Corps projects in Ghana. So I've been all the way from extreme north, east, south, the whole bit, do, doing projects. Um, in 2004, I decided that um, I would do a land development project. I'm an architect um, uh, from the States. I graduated uh, Cal Poly uh, in uh, Pomona, California, and then uh, got my MBA in finance and uh, saw that I, in order to do real estate development in the U.S., even when you get the requirements met, it is very difficult for a bank to lend you millions of dollars based on drawings on a piece of paper. Um, so I said, well, instead of working for developers, being a consultant, where can I develop myself? I saw, in, at that time, I saw in Ghana the exchange rate was um, uh, 2,000 CD to $1. Yeah, at that time. So I said, well, okay, let's see how this works. And that's when I decided to um, take it to the next level as far as my exploration of um, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Ghana being the, the jewel because the government is more stable here than any of the other uh, countries. Right now Rwanda is looking pretty good, but that's another story. Um, so I came and bought land in 2005. I actually um, met RR, was being interviewed at that time on a radio show and Bomani called in asking some questions. So I just never forgot that name. So <laughs> I think we, you know, we were destined to meet. <laughs> but anyway, so um, <clears throat> first off, you all are welcome. I guess, uh, what would it be, Aquaba? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and, and, okay, so we got that going. <laughs> okay. Um, if you're in an airway country, it's a way so. And the answer is just yo. Hey, so, yo. <laughs> I get well, is probably going to take you all all over. So those greetings are things that you should uh, kind of remember. Um, so um, anyway, the business opportunities here are unbelievable. They are unbelievable. You will be blown away by the opportunities that are here that are doable. Now, from the land development side, which is where I started, I also do business development because when I was with the Peace Corps and over all the projects, that most of them was what's called small enterprise development. And I can speak to you on a lot of them if you want to talk about agri-business, agri agricultural development, uh, cash crops, if you want to talk about precious minerals, I can shed some light on it because the opportunities are there. The problem is that you're not, this is not the place to come if you're looking for a job. If you're taking that U.S. mentality, I'll come here, I'll take my degree, I'll go to the whatever company and I will um, become, you know, become one of the successful candidates. Uh, that isn't going to happen. I mean, um, if, if that is the thought, that isn't going to happen. Most of the uh, people here um, are uh, retirement age, retirement thinking, uh, you know, I'm thinking about retirement, or they're entrepreneurs or entrepreneurial thinkers. Because before you leave here, you are going to say to yourself, hey, this is what's going to happen. Mark my word. I'll give you my number. You can call me if it doesn't. You're going to see on the tour 
the various pluses and stuff that's here. Ghana isn't all roses. This is not a romantic place. It's not all roses. Um, you're going to meet with some discouraging things because the culture here is real and it's real different from what we know. I thought we as black Americans did not have a culture because we did not have, you know, a homeland. So we don't have a culture. It wasn't until I got here that I realized we have a culture and most people abroad are trying to emulate our culture. Okay, that's one of the reasons why our status here is a little higher. But at the end of the day, Ghana is very proud of their culture. You're not going to come here and change it. That is not going to happen. You're not going to change Ghana into the U.S. From a business standpoint, the business connectivity um, should be that which will allow Ghanaian resources to be manufactured and distributed abroad because your money will come from abroad. What they need here is manufacturing. They need jobs. They need business connectivity with outside companies. Average income here is what, not even $5 a day, or $5 an hour. It's not even $5 an hour. Now, for you business types, that should, be, that should tell you right there, yes, I need to be here. For those of you who are trying to change Ghana and lift Ghana up, then you better put a business here and pay more. You will not change what's here. Um, and how it works. But anyway, to talk a little about the land and land development issues, one of the big things here uh, is land. Um, land is very difficult to acquire. You have to um, know what you're doing because the people here, first of all, when they see you, when they see you, they don't see African Americans. They see foreigners. And by seeing foreigners, they see foreign dollars. They see foreign dollars. Okay? So they see you as the solution to a lot of their economic problems. A lot of us come here thinking, well, wait, I'm home, I'm in the motherland. Well, yeah, you are home, and yeah, you are in the motherland, but they don't know you. They don't know you. They don't have um, uh, uh, the same love. Hang on one second. Fortune? Yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I did, yeah. Yeah, give me about another half hour. Or 15 minutes here, or 15 minutes. Yes, I'll call you. But anyway, that does not stop or preclude the desire for business connectivity. A lot of them think that's what you're supposed to be doing. Bring your knowledge, bring your expertise, bring your skill set, build your, your, your company, build your what you're building, build your dreams, hire us hire us so that we can build our dreams. The, so that, that's how it goes. But now as far as land goes, people here, the way they own land, they don't see land the way we do. There's no grant deed, trust deed um, process. There's no 30-year mortgage. Um, it doesn't work like that. Land, land here, when you buy land, you generally are buying all cash at a go. The, the, you, you can make deals that are a little different, you know, that, that will be different, but that is how the payments are expected. There is no bank that's going to uh, lend you X number of CD that you will pay back monthly to buy a piece of land. Uh, now they'll lend you money to develop that land. They'll lend you that, 
but to purchase the land. That's not how it works here. Um, also here, land is um, indentured, which means it's lease. There's no grant deed. But the lease is, is um, for us, for, for foreigners, the lease is 55 years, 45 to 55 years. If you start your business here, then you'll get the higher number, the 55 year lease. If you marry a Ghanaian, you'll get the 99 year lease. So for those of you as you ride in the bus, Bomani's bus, look out the window, you may see some future, some future husbands and wives. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. If you're gonna do a business deal, <laughs> okay, wait. Maybe that's not what Bomani wanted me to tell <laughs> But we'll hold off on. That's for another business seminar <laughs> discussion. But anyway, um, so um, when you buy land here, you're buying land from a family. You're not. You're buying from a family. There's no escrow where deeds are held, in this case um, indentures are held until the deal is done. When the deal is done, you get your deed, they get their money. It's, that doesn't exist, That's no, it doesn't work like that here. You pay the family, and the family then, they distribute money to every member of the family, supposedly. And you go and you get your indenture, your survey, you get survey documents, you get your indenture, which is your lease document, and everything is great. And then one day somebody will come up while you're building that great company and say, you're on my land. Get off. You're building on my land. And you say, wait, no, no, it's not. And you pull out your papers. And uh, they said, uh, and you say, I paid such and such. And they said, yeah, but they didn't pay us. So you bought theirs. You didn't buy mine. Wow. You didn't buy mine. <laughs> oh, this is true. Oh you yeah, didn't buy mine. Oh. Yes. I'll pop that so, thing to happen. Yes. That's yes. All. Yes. 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 Okay. And it happens to, well, it happens to everybody. But when a foreigner is on the hook, they know they can get more money out of you. Yeah by playing that card. But uh, Ghanaians have that same problem. It just, the, the numbers aren't as high <laughs> as if it's a, a, a foreigner doing it. Then you have, now again, I'm, ta I'm talking land development. But um, then you have a thing here called the land guards. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, Jerry and I, uh, talk about uh, a few things and I was saying that what Ghana need is or what we need here foreigners we need to have either a mafia or the bloods and the crips we need to invite them here and point them in the right direction because these land guards as you're building on your property they come to you and they will tell you that they have to um, perform, uh, there's a digging fee, and that digging fee that you have, I mean digging, literally, you're digging a footing. They say there's a digging fee you have to pay, and that money you have to pay to them. Um, they then will um, say that they have to slaughter a ram or, or whatever their ritual is and that wasn't performed and oh by the way you got to pay for that too and if you refuse which you can do remember mafia bloods crypts okay but if they're not available and you refuse a lot of your development materials can be sabotaged things of this nature you will also hear um, things about the chief. The chief and the family head, those are two different things. Um, and in a lot of cases, it, not in all cases, sometimes it's both in the same individual. Um, but um, the chief can sell you land, but the chief 
can't stop others from coming to claim the land. They can speak in your behalf, but they, they have no power except for the fact that in this culture, most of the people respect the words of the chief. So you won't, if you have the chief on your side, but these are all things after you have paid for the land. It's like, why am I going through this? I paid you. So you run into those uh, challenges with the land. Then let's talk about some of the good stuff with land. There's no zoning here, none, zero. Now, we as black Americans, African Americans, we, we're not going to do the wrong thing. We're not going to go to a residential neighbor and a residential neighborhood and build a factory that uh, emits um, uh, uh, hazardous materials or mercury or bump. We're not going to do that because of our love and respect for the country, for Mother Africa, so to speak. We're not going to do that. But many people here do that. Chinese people, the Chinese, the Lebanese, um, they could care less. They're here for one reason, and that is to make money. That is their reason. Now, if you're doing a development like mine, mine is, uh, what, 57, mine is what's called a master, master plan community. It's 57 homes. It's 400,000 square feet of commercial. It is um, entertainment. We're putting a jazz club up. Uh, we're building that. All of your needs will be satisfied within your gates. Now, you say, well, why, did, why is that? Well, you still can come. You come to Ghana to do everything that's here. That's fine. But when you come home, you need to be able to come home to something you are used to, such as hot and cold water, a choice, such as water, period, because water goes off and you're without it and you have to use a barrel. Um, electricity, consistent electricity. Um, when electricity goes off, now those of us who are in business, you know, computers and all of this stuff, when electricity goes off, we're yelling and screaming because it tears up the electronics because everything here is 220. You, we're all used to 110, the current. Everything here is 220. And when the power goes off and it comes back on, that surge messes up your printers, your plotters, your computers, your, your televisions, things of this nature. Now, there are workarounds to that, but you have to know that, and you have to do it. You have to do that. Um, so, um, that, uh, so our project, we are marketing to diasporians. That is who we're marketing to. Um, Ghana had, uh, uh, what is it? It was a year of home going, homecoming, home going. Year of return. Yes. They made more money that year. What was that? Um, 19, 2019. 2019. Yeah, the, the 400 year. 16, 19. They made, Ghana Tourism Board made more money that year than the previous five years put together. Um, and I always say, I think um, Donald Trump is the lowest level of individual on the planet. However, he definitely made people think about leaving America and coming back to Ghana or to the home. So we ended up getting more put. Every time he would do something stupid, we'd get more people calling. I'm sure uh, Bomani's tour numbers started to go. But we would get more people calling about the project, about buying land and the like. And that's the other thing. With our project, you won't have the land issues because I've already fought them and it is my property. So I'm the seller. There, there, there's nobody that can come in my family and say I didn't get my piece. So therefore you no longer have no. So we, we, we've gotten through that. We've gotten over that hurdle. So those are the things that we offer. Those of you with business ideas, 
Um, we also uh, dealt with the cashew. Do people like cashews? Yeah. 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 That, that is the second most expensive nut yeah, it is. behind the what, what Brazil nut. Behind the Brazil nut. Well, cashews are great here. They grow in the arid climate. And they grow fine and they have a real interesting taste. You'll love it. Uh, but there's seven products that can be made from the cashew. Now you all, what I'm going to tell you now, you all aren't going to believe it, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, obviously one is the cashew, two is juice, gin, pectin, syrup, that's four, five, the, the shell that it, it is in. Cashew, if you look at cashew on a tree, it looks like you can just bite it, but really there's a shell. You have to roast it. When that shell opens up, the cashew is actually inside that. That shell burns higher BTUs than the wood we put in our fireplace now, right now, right now. When you go back to your respective places, if you had cashew shells and put them in the fireplace, it would burn hotter than the wood that you cut to do. Lastly is brake fluid. I see that expression. I knew somebody was going to give, give me that look. Yes, when cashews, uh, when it's roasted and the shell opens, it secretes an oil. That oil is the number one ingredient of brake fluid. I'm telling you, number one. So you got, and, and it can grow here. That's why it's one of Ghana's cash crops because you can, it's exportable because Germany is where most of our brake fluid uh, uh, companies are, are. But everybody would rather do business with, um, um, what is it, the, the, the Arabian, the um, pa Pakistan, um, with those countries, those desert co countries, then doing business here with you. Yes, yes, that's why I said, so that's fine, but business, if we put it together, because we, that was one of my projects, um, and we're exporting, what is it, um, uh, 5,000 barrels a week, which now is about 25,000 barrels. Um, that you're exporting because they they the people that are buying the countries that are buying are buying finished okay it's just something we don't know well you say okay that's fine you said okay so now there's yet a business opportunity not to mention the fact that the cashews themselves I was gonna say get another black Wall Street yeah the cashews themselves well, he said, that's cashew. That's what, what one of the projects I ended up getting involved in. But in doing so, <clears throat> we talk about cocoa. Now, cocoa comes in a pod, and it's a bean. You break the pod open, and you, they pull out the beans and do what they do with it. I don't know how cocoa is made, but Nestle's is here, so they know. <laughs> But um, that's not the, my point here, is that those of us, when we were younger, we used to eat these things called pomegranates, okay? And the little purple little things in there, we'd eat them and then pull the pulp out and throw that away. Well, that's the same with the cocoa. The bean is there. You pull the bean out, but there's this um, pulp and they pull the pulp out and throw it away. There be piles of the pulp from here to here. And they either burn it or they um, try to get um, trucks to come and collect it. But you remember I told you that cashew has seven products? Well that pulp can be made into 188 plastic products. Just the pulp, and you can go and collect it 
you know, we take Bomani's bus, throw you guys out. We go at, uh, to Branga Hoffa and collect all of the stuff. We come back, sell it, and then give you all a share so you won't be mad. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> these are the type of things that are here that you're going to see as you go around. You're going to see things. Um, the Nim tree. Which one is there? That one right there. The Nim tree grows wild here. You have to have to hire people to cut to cut it. But the leaves of the Nim tree are processed into the coating for the pills you take. You know, when you take a, a aspirin that has a coating on it or whatever the coating, it's processed into the here. It's, it, we have to have, we hire people to come and cut the nim tree on our site every week. Matter of fact, if you went to my site, they better be cutting it right now. Right now. Um, is that where you get the neem oil from? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. That's yes. what I spray my plants with to keep the bugs off. There you go. And also cashews, milk fermentation. Yeah, and you can, I didn't even mention processing it into the milk and the stuff that a, con a, a, a manufacturing co company would be able to um, produce all those things. What The things I told you came from the Cocoa Re Research Institute in Ghana. That's what they came up with and said, hey, are any of your black American people interested in the, you know, this type of deal? And um, we went and presented them. And then, um, uh, in the back, um, there's Abin. We um, uh, I had a real interesting conversation the other day about precious minerals. Um, Ghana has a bunch of gold. Anything under 18 carat here, they don't consider that to be gold. Anything over 22 carat is pure. Okay. Jewelry quality, the high quality is 18. Below that, nobody even, you know, I mean, that's like, well, you got a little bit of go, you've tried, <laughs> you know, you've tried. But um, gold, uh, the, the extract, extraction of gold is not a legal thing that you can do here. Ghana's gold is owned by the UK. Now, it should be black Americans that own it, that, but, but we'll work on that, but it's the UK. However, now, since uh, 2016, um, foreigners can get a license to go to the, um, uh, go to the gold villages or the diamond villages. You can go there and now you, with your license, you can buy the gold and export. Most people don't do that, but let's say if we all here decided that's what we were gonna do. At the end of the day, it the license and registration comes to about $22,000. And you have to do 100,000, uh, uh, the assay amount must be $100,000 per month. So you have to have an end user in the U.S. When, or wherever you're going when you do the deal. But that is standard business. That is standard business. You don't, nobody starts a business without knowing who the end user is and who your customer, your market is. So you have to do that first. But if you wanted to do it and you put together 22,000, you can go to cantonments and um, you can, uh, cantonments is an area um, again, I know you all are going to go by that area too, where where that type of where that uh, office is, and you can do that. Now, most people don't do that. Okay, most people just go to a gold village, Takwa or whatever, and um, the uh, uh, the boys uh, like their gallum seat. That's the name. The name is Gallum. See, how old is this young man? Ten. Ten, okay. Ten. Well, Ten. maybe I'll... What? Ten. You're Gemini. Way to go, young man. <laughs> um, but about 15, 16, they work 
in the mines. Now the gold mine isn't what we think you wear a hard hat with the light on it and you got your pickaxe and you go in the, it isn't that. <clears throat> gold is on any, is on the land, period. Now, Kumasi, where you guys are gonna go, is where the largest uh, uh, gold reserve, so I won't even say reserve, largest amount of gold is. That, um, is because the mountain is there. So let me tell you how this is extracted. I, I don't mean to hold you up, and I'll stop whenever you say <laughs> stop. Because it, once you get started and, and you see all the opportunities that are here, that are big money over there, and all you have to do is put it together. When you get it together, you got, um, uh, you learn in business school three components to success is you must be able to control land, labor, and capital. Okay? Land is here. Labor is cheap. Capital is here is where you got enough. You have enough to play here. If you want to try to create a precious mineral operation in the U.S., it's going to cost way more than $22,000. $22,000, you're in business. Okay? Um, but anyway, um, so uh, there are boys that go into the, that work for the mine. The way they do it is the, the British companies, Ghana Gold, they set charges in the mountain and then boom, blow it up and all the rocks come out and the gold is in the rocks. Okay, they come out. The boys come and they chip away. Um, the other stones, which you're not going to believe what they are, emeralds, rubies, they chip away quartz. <laughs> you won't believe what they are, but they chip it all away to get to the gold, throw the gold in the, in the bin, and move on to the next. Now, when they set these charges, it takes two weeks for the dust to settle. So nobody can, is supposed to go there while the dust is settling. But the boys in the village go the next day. They don't care. And they do that and put those pieces of gold they find in their pocket. And then, boys being boys, you know, they get it in their money and the gold in the pocket. Where do they go next? To the bar where the girls are. <laughs> and start spinning up, you know, using up, okay? Now, those boys are called gallum seed, okay? Now, if you as a foreigner are coming into one of the villages, they will see your car, your vehicle, your, tr your bus, um, and like I said, I, I always go to Tarkwa, but there are others, I mean, um, um, Obwasi and others. But um, they see your bus, they know what you're there for. So you come out, and they'll come up to you, they'll come to you and say, hey, you want to go, you want to go, you want to go. Now, there's a gold tester that you, there's a cheap one, and there's one that's more expensive. Cheap one might be $15. But you have to get it in the States, and that's the one with the, 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 the um, I'm sorry. Yeah, you 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 it, it you have these three liquids, um, and you scratch the gold on it, and you pour it, and and if it turns the color, then it's good gold. All right, but that's not your issue here, cause gold comes out the ground here at 23 carat. That's what comes out the ground. Okay, now with that being the case, and 22 carat around this whole world is considered pure, then pure is what's coming out. So, but you can test it and do whatever you need to do, okay, to, to verify what you got. So, okay, they do that. Um, now, as I said, that is not, uh, okay, so you can do that. You buy it, put it in your pocket, and go wherever you want to go. But getting on that airplane, that's not legal. That's not legal. <laughs> Okay, that's, you can't do that. That's not illegal. Um, have I done it before? Yes, but no. 
I, I'm, there's no one. I'm not advocating. Bomani on the film is not advocating that you do that. But you go to Precious Minerals and you take the gold and say, how much can I get for that? They'll assay it right there, give you and tell you what it's worth in dollars, and give you those dollars, and now you go and do what you want. Um, last time I did that, um, I had a piece about the size of the palm of my hand, and at that time, the gold price was uh, 1,200 to the ounce, and um, we ended up getting uh, $3,600. And you get it right then. I mean, they, you take it, they assay it, and you do it. Now it's legal because they stamp it. Well, we took the money, but if we wanted to take the gold, they would stamp it, and now you can do what you do. Okay. Um, diamonds are the same way. You go to um, the diamond villages. Um, what is it? Aquatia? Yeah, you go to the diamond villages. They see you coming. And they are, um, Kibi is another one of the diamond villages that, uh, um, they see you coming, they know what you're there for, and they have diamonds. And you'll be there and say, I want to buy a diamond. Now, I made a big mistake, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm, you may have to turn the camera off on this one. I made a big mistake, you know, all of us, all of us have mistakes in our life. Okay, this one you all are going to say, man, you are crazy, but let me tell it, and then you all can just think it. Don't say it, though. <laughs> just think it. But I went to buy some diamonds, went to um, Aquatia, and sure enough, they selling diamonds. And I bought, I think I bought 50, 5 zero. Well, one of the guys came to me and said, do you want to, are you interested in fancies? Fancies. Now, I had never heard that word before, but I wanted to look like I knew, right? <laughs> you had to look like, you know. So I said, well, wait, man, yeah, let me see these fancies. <laughs> so they said, okay. Now, one of the things you learn is that you can get cheated or taken advantage of with the diamond thing because you know how beer bottles are brown? If you break a beer bottle, the glass, uh, the, the shreds of glass that are brown, that is what fancy diamonds look like. But I didn't know that. But I knew that beer bottles are brown. This man pulled out three, only three. I should have known them. Remember, I got 50. He pulled out only three. So I should have known that this guy was was trying to, you know. But, um, I looked, I saw the brown, and I said, no, I ain't, I said, how much? He said, give me $300, okay, $100 for each. So if he said 300, I immediately said 150, right? He said, well, okay, then I said, no, this is crazy. I'm not, a, I've done my deal, I'm not gonna. So he said, okay. He folded the thing up and went away, all right. I brought, came back to the U.S. and, you know, did my little thing. And I uh, was walking in the mall and went past K Jewelers. And K Jewelers, because I had these diamonds, I wanted to see if there was value there. Remember, end users. So I went, to, although I know better now, but I was a, a very novice then. But I went there and, they sa and uh, I said, I have these diamonds, I want to see if you're interested. And they said, where'd you get them from? I said, Ghana. They said, well, let's, let's look at them. So they, you know, they, they uh, took my ID and took me into the back and he poured them on it and they looked at it and said, okay, yeah, good, good, good. So, but these are kind of small. We need larger ones. I said, well, this is all I got. So they said, oh, so he said, okay, and decided to let that go. So fine. I walk out and as I'm walking out, I see in their display case, it says, fancies. So now remember, I just uh, this word is right here. So I said, "Hey, what are those?" He said, "Oh, do you have those?" I said, "No." He said, "Do you have access to them?" I said, "Maybe." I said, "But I don't know what they are." He pulled it out the case. Remember, we went back in to get my ID. Went back in, they closed the thing, pulled them out, and they're very colorful. And um, I said, "Well, I may have access." I said, "How much are they?" 
he said, um, well, if you got one carat, we would pay you about $45,000. Now remember, I had three, three, 100 a piece. He said, we'll pay you about $45,000. I said, well, okay, cool. What do they look like in the rough? He said, and I quote, you take a beer bottle and break it, it looks just like that. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> and so that's why I said, nah, just look and say, yeah, that was a dumb, that wasn't good. You know, me, the big businessman, wouldn't want, didn't want to take the risk and look what happened. But don't tell me that. Just, just look at me funny. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so, I mean, there are so many opportunities here. There's so many opportunities, yet there's so many things you have to become accustomed to. I'm sure um, Bomani and others will share with you the challenges of life here, but there's so many opportunities, especially if you're dealing with your market that is an international market. If you're trying to do business with a Ghanaian economy, it's not going to work. It will not work. But if you're trying to do business with Ghanaian resources, you will win. You will win. And, and anyone that thinks that, well, you know what, I don't want to take the Ghanaian resources and get rich. Well, Chinese are taking resources and getting rich. Lebanese are taking resources and getting rich. Germans are taking resources and getting rich. <clears throat> We're the only ones that would do the right thing with those resources and allow our fellow countrymen to get rich with us. They are, they are, they are not. It's not even a question. They're not doing that at all and they don't care less. And in actuality, why should they? This ain't their motherland, they got a country. This ain't their homeland, they got a country. Why should they? They left there to come here to make money. They didn't come here to, to see Africa grow, Sub-Saharan Africa grow. But anyway, um, that's how that goes. I, I hope I've covered, I covered some of the topics. Oh yes, brother, appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure people got some uh, questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I'm not sure you're proud. We go to that place where those young boys get a day after. There's your man. Yeah, that's a quality tour guide. Yes. There's your man. Where those young guys at? Do they always have that thing going on like that? For the dot gold or dot? Oh. Well, the answer is yes to each one. However, I mean, just but if you're going to, um, like I said, I always go to Takwa, Takwa, but. Um, you go into um, uh, Obwasi and these places, they're there, but they're there all over. Gold, they, they called, the, called this the Gold Coast for a reason. It was only us that changed it to black gold because they were taking us out of here, <laughs> okay? But it was the Gold Coast for a reason. Uh, it, it's, it's not a big, they don't, they, they understand the market but they don't understand the entirety of the market. That's our job. That's our job. You know, maybe that's what, what the good Lord left for us, to come and develop our own economies and economic growth and help them develop theirs and we move up together. Maybe that's what it, it's all about. I'm not sure. I have a question. Sure. I'll play it, Karen. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask, did you finish your subdivision already? No, no. We're in actually just in phase two. Um, September. Are you coming? You running a group in September? Uh, December. December. Well, bring them by the project. We're having the project right. opening September. Um, what is that? Labor Day? The, right in there. And the type of houses, are you doing a specific type or is it free for all, whatever people want to build? There we go. Okay, it's never free for all because of the community we're trying to create. Okay. However, we have custom home vacant lots, which we sell for about 8,000. Mm -hmm. You buy your lot and you build your home, but there are requirements. It must be a minimum of uh, 2,000 square feet, can be no higher than two story. Mm -hmm. Um, you cannot have livestock, which is one of the things you're going to get used to. You can't have goats, 
and sheep and cows and chickens running through the project. No, you cannot. Um, can't do that. Um, but, um, you know, we're trying to keep the environment to be an environment that would be um, uh, something that you are used to from where you come from. And you all are building the home? No. No, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. The answer is yes and no. Okay. We're building on. We are builders. We can build. Mm -hmm. But if you buy a custom lot, you can bring your own. You have to submit your design, mm -hmm. but as long as it's 2,000 square feet yeah. and under 40 foot from um, from ground level to top of roof, mm -hmm. um, then you know it's your dream home. Mm -hmm. Now you can hire your own contractors. Your whole you got 36 months to to uh, get to lentil level, mm -hmm. um, which uh, in the states is right above the header for your windows and doors. Okay, um, but if you're building two-story, then you need to get to second-story level. Okay, and then how tall uh, the height? Yeah, is it 40? yeah, 40 feet from ground to so, but to like top. Like it's like I'm saying, like a two, like this ceiling, like yeah. the oh, first floor. How yeah, tall? Yeah, inside ceiling? inside measurements here are 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. Yes, like yes, floor to ceiling, okay. 10 feet. Yep, yep. Um, so that, I hope that answers your question. Um, oh, I, there was a part two. So that's the custom home section. But we then are doing our executive homes. And the executive homes we build, it's just like in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You go, you look at the models, you pick your model, you pick the lot that uh, we're releasing in that phase, and then we build it for you. Now, you don't have to pay that all cash. We put together a payment plan that um, will allow us to get things done and will also allow a pay as you go. Meaning, one of the big problems here with the construction industry here is that if you're in the US, you know, I can tell you, I'm California, so what is that, 7,000 miles away? And you're telling somebody to build your house for you? There are all sorts of horror stories where people are sending money and no house is getting built. Okay, there are all sorts of horror stories. Matter of fact, there are people who use their retirement money, uh, what is it, 401k, to build a house here so that when they retire they can come. And either A, they come and the house is not there, or B, they come and the house is not what they designed on paper. You <laughs> said, well, look, it's on the paper. This is what I wanted. And they'll tell you, they'll say, oh, it's okay. You, you, you should like it. They <laughs> 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 chop your, yeah, some, yeah, people chop your money for real. Yeah, he said, wow. said you can have it. That's, that is one of the niches for our company, is that, well, we'll design it if you want, but whatever you design, we will build it and we'll, you'll go step by step, like it will go from uh, ground to foundation, foundation to lintel, or foundation to second floor, second floor to roof, roof to interiors, boom, 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 and you'll be able to come at any time and see what's going on and we will be able to um, let you see and I'm on the hook. The company's on the hook if we don't do it. Try to sue a Ghanaian company and you will, this brother 10 years old will be my age by the time you get through the court system. Okay? So that's, that's that. And do you have a price range already for your executive homes? Not really. I did until I found out that um, uh, I got competitors that are selling at a price, so I'm gonna have to lower my price. Yes, that's not good. Um, I got investors that want to keep, prop, but we don't want the houses standing up. So, yeah. So, um, the I gotta, I'm, I'm lowering uh, the prices. Uh, but our square footage, we have three thousand, four thousand, and five thousand, which is all a three bedroom, um, uh, three bath. I'm sorry. We have three bedroom, three bath. We have four bedroom, we have sorry, three bedroom, two and a half bath, four bedroom, three bath, five bedroom, uh, four bath. 
uh, with the loft and, and, and uh, school game community with nice manicured lawns, stuff like that. No, the answer is yes. Gated, gated community, manicured lawn, lawns. Okay, it's hard to grow grass in sand. Okay, but we do cover the front yard landscaping and we do the upkeep on that. It's in your association fee, which will be about $75, right? $75 a year? So $75 a year? A year? Yeah. A month. A month. US dollars a year. Yes, yeah, seventy-five U.S. dollars. That's that's where the association. Is. Now, with that, it covers your front yard upkeep. It covers your um, you pay your own water bill, stuff like that. But it um, it covers security, it's a gated community. We got security the whole way through. Um, it covers your that I suppose there are two swimming pools, two tennis courts. And the clubhouse. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That was my next question. Is it still the leasing? Your I'm sorry. That's included. Your company is it still the leasing process? Like yeah, we. Years, well, uh, yes. Okay. The answer to your question is yes, because you have to have your land registered in in Ghana. So I can't register something outside of their law. Okay. Okay. But the enforcer on that is me. Mm -hmm. It's our company. Mm -hmm. But this, yes. this, this um, complex is completely done. You get the water, um, the sewer, if you have the sewer, I don't know what well, complex you have. But hey, you just, all you got to just come and move in. That is the plan. That, that's, that, always that the is the plan. that's always unless the plan. You're doing, unless, you're not doing. <laughs> unless you're doing the custom home, which you're building yourself. Now, if oh, you okay. have us to build yeah. it, yes. Just and our executive homes, yes. And um, we are doing uh, two boreholes. Jerry took the lead on getting a borehole uh, dug here. And we're going to dig two boreholes so that you won't run into this water being turned off. You'll turn the faucet and water will come out. Um, the uh, electricity, um, we, there is a, See, there are black Americans here doing many things. There's a solar company here run by black Americans. And they want to, uh, for $5,000, they'll put the solar in uh, on either each unit or any design. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. So solar power, so you'll be running your own energy, so if, so if the power is out, you'll still have power? Thank you. And the reason why I'm asking that, because I have solar power in the U.S. And when uh -huh. the power does go out, okay, so I'm like, if somebody hit a pole or something booming out, it is out, even though I have solar power. So, so I want to, how, how would that work? Would you we'll, just running your own energy and you'll... Yeah, we'll be running our own. Wait, okay. wait, wait. There's solar power, but then there's Ghana power. Okay. So when Ghana power goes out, solar kicks in automatically. Oh, is that how it's going? That's how that one is going? Yes, that's how yes, it that's, that's how you want to okay. set it up. Yes, that's how I want to set it up. Consistent power. That um, is great. Okay. So yeah. it's like a, like a backup generator. Your, this solar is high. Right, so not, but it'll be transparent to you. Because the solar that I have, it eliminates an electric bill yep. if you don't use it all. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if I you, oh, go over my uses, I'm sure I'll have to use more. So you yeah, work with other, um, other areas, other um, companies that are building communities, if somebody want to hire you as a consultant to come in and help them? Yeah, you know, that's a, a good question. Um, I um, have my, my company in the U.S., and as I was telling you, when we weren't allowed, when we weren't able to meet the requirements to do land development, obviously we're doing consulting. I started that company in 1984, and um, we've been consultants uh, ever since, technically, I mean, other than buying some apartments and rehabbing, blah, blah, blah. But um, I did not plan to be a consultant here. This wasn't what I came here to do. But so many people have said, hey, can you, um, you know, help us with our plan? Can you get us to this level? Can you do a site plan uh, uh, for us, you know, subdivision design? Can you do a grading plan, a drainage uh, plan? 
And uh, the answer is, is, yeah. Then my, what is it, the, the business side said, man, don't leave that money on the table. Say yes, <laughs> and then we do. But uh, no, my focus is the pro is my project, because I we got this September deadline that people are coming. They're coming in September to see. Uh, but for the most part, then yeah, we would take on uh, we would take on other what, what region other is projects, it? other consultants. Yeah. What region is it? Is it there uh, a front? The project? Yes. It's right down the road. Oh, right down the road. Yeah, it's uh, Duenia. So if you can just give people a few little information, like the website, any contact information, because I'm sure people are going to have questions. Okay. Okay. Um, you'll go to um, www.canormangroup.com. That's the website. Yeah, you can go to it right now. www.canormangroup.com. And that is what's up, uh, Craig Norman. Uh, don't and it's that. on the card I gave you. The card I gave you is on there. So we have another question. Uh, with regards to the leases, yeah. so you said up to 50 for foreigners. 55, 55. Yeah, yes, you got, yeah. And then what happens if the person who signed the lease, you know, passes on and it's no longer right. here? It's Does that transfer to the yeah. heirs? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. it's transferred. Yeah. After that 55 years, the heirs are being and young adults and young people. No, what they would do after 55 years, you would come, you would renew another, but I don't know if I'll be alive for that, but in your contract, it will say renewal. So you get the land, you pay for the land, you developed it with a house and whatever else is on it. The end of the lease, let's say you don't want to renew for whatever reason. Yes. Or your heirs don't want to renew. They don't do you get comfortable? Uh, compensated for the development that you've done on the land? Yeah, you sell it just like you sell your house. Mm -hmm. And you will sell it for much more than you bought it. That's another one of the goals so of the project. Yes, yeah. so you sell it. I mean, in the U.S., you buy real estate as an Same investment. Right. Right. That is the concept that we're dealing with here. You Just as what you know in the States, we want that here. Um, so yeah, you sell your property, and um, yeah. Yeah. about the clubhouse too. Well, I think they got it. Uh, I just want to answer uh, what my sister. Uh, I have I've been in Ghana for some years now. I'm a typically Ghanaian. I was born and bred in Ghana, in Accra. Uh, although I come from Elmina, uh, I'm a royal in Elmina. But I've never heard anyone who bought a land, develop the land, put up a property, and the person want to leave the land. The only people who did that, and you have to go without doing anything to the building or whatsoever, are the British when they were leaving. They just pushed them away. You go, you go, and then you were thrown out. That. But apart from that, nobody. So for us who are there, you are occupying the place, the place is yours. When you are leaving, you will definitely look for someone. Your, your descendants will definitely would like to come in. And if you want to sell, it's between you and them. But the important thing is that there's going to be a, 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 the chief who's going to come to you for renewal. It's just a token. It's nothing difficult. I have seen some, and the people paid it to us a huge building. A store building about five stories. And you know how much they pay? You paid about 3,000 cities. 3,000 less than uh, $1,000. And they have to renew it for another 55 years. So, that man here, you have no problem. I'm glad he said that because coming from me, people may say, well, wait, he ain't going to end. So, but yeah, so I'm very glad you said that. You asked me something. What was your question? The question is about that clubhouse. Would the clubhouse be included in the fees? Yeah. Enjoy? That's included with that? Clubhouse and um, um, the party room, so like you're having a birthday party or whatever, all of that will be. It's just like what you're leaving. Now, when you decide that, okay, today we're going to go to a cocoon, we'll go. Okay, that's fine. But when you come home, 
you're coming home, like the jazz club will be going, you come in and, you know, and... and something like the villages. I'm sorry? It would be, it would be something like the villages. You've heard yes. of the villages. Yes. Right, it would be something like that. Okay. Oh, and we have a uh, elementary school for those of you who have uh, young children. We will have um, an elementary school and a vocational school. Oh, wow. For those who are still producing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for the, right, right. Well, appreciate, appreciate it. And our Craig, um, we have to cut it short because we're going to have to head back to our car. We appreciate you. And uh, if you have more business cards, you can share it. But I did uh, record the business card also. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, well, appreciate you, family. Well, I'm glad we finally got a chance to meet. I, I appreciate being able to chat with you guys because we need to hear. You don't know how badly you're needed here, but I'm telling you that the things that are in your mind to do that you've been saying, you know what, if I only had, or why can't I get enough people, to get, you can do them here. And uh, you'll get to see if you're really as smart as you think you are. But the opportunity is here. You can do it. Um, so with that, like I said, let me thank you. Uh, Bomani, uh, for allowing me to say a few words, and definitely uh, uh, it was a pleasure meeting.